In the last video around the endpoint privilege management feature, we looked at elevation settings because that's the first thing you need to do. And it's the way you control whether users can elevate all applications or whether they can elevate none. But what if you want to make sure that users can elevate no applications by default, but allow them to elevate specific applications that you might want to? That's where elevation rules come in. So let's jump straight in. I'm not going to mess about with this video at all. Let's get straight into it. We're going to go straight to the endpoint security feature down to endpoint privilege management. And I've already set up some rules because I wanted to test them out to make sure they worked. But let's see how they work because they work very, very well. So we have endpoint uh, privilege management as the feature and elevation rules policies. I've got two here. Let's take a look firstly at our elevation settings policy just to show where we're at from there. We'll just scroll to the bottom. We have deny all requests by default. So if a user was to, well, I'll show you. If a user was to go to their, uh, oh, actually uh, Firefox is right there. Let's just go to Firefox, just right click on Firefox and show more options. Again, they haven't fixed that quite yet, but we'll choose run with elevated access and it is denied. So by default, it's denied. So users can't just elevate the application by right clicking on it. We'll close that down. Now that's uh, the, the settings policy, as I showed you before, works very, very well. Let's take a look at, it, at how we can elevate 7-zip though. So the way I've got it set up right now is in, uh, we have the file name 7ZFM, all device users it applies to, and the elevation type is set to automatic. I'll show you what that looks like when we're configuring it actually, because that's actually quite interesting. Go to config settings, it's set to elevation type automatic. We'll choose edit instance. Now the only thing I've set here on the elevation type is automatic. 7ZFM is the type is the file name and then the file hash which I got by using get file hash in PowerShell to, to do that. Um, in fact, let me just show you how you do that. Let's go to remote desktop again and so open up terminal and quickly find the location of 7zip. There's 7ZFM. We're going to copy as path. I'm going to do get dash file hash and tap in there. So there's the hash. Very simple to get the file hash for the applications that you want to elevate. You'll notice it ends in alpha 45 there and the hash on this, if I just show you this, scroll down there a little bit, it ends in alpha 45. So that's the same hash that we just created. So didn't create it, did we? We, uh, we extracted the hash or generated the hash based on the file. Anyway, so that's what we've done and it's set to automatic and it's really important that we know what automatic does. So back to my computer. So I'm going to go to File Explorer and I'm just going to double double click on 7ZFM and it opens behind the window, but never mind. There it is. So I'm, I'm, I've opened this. I'm going to go into C, Users, Administrator, the local admin on the computer, go into their desktop and you can see I've created a couple of files to test. If I create a file, I can create a file in the local administrator there. And I'll just check if I can do it on any other user as well. Go down to public desktop, for example. I really shouldn't be able to create files here for all users. But as you can see, I can do that. So this application is running as admin. And I didn't need to tell it to run as admin as the user. So for example, I didn't need to right click on the file itself and choose show more options, run with elevated access. But if I do, you can see it actually does run with elevated access as well. Automatic elevation is designed to silently elevate the application for you, which it, you can imagine the, the breadth of the use case right there for applications that need elevated access and users that don't really understand what that means. This is a fantastic option. Let's take a look at the other rule that I've got set already for us which is elevate PowerShell. And I can imagine a few use cases where you might need to elevate PowerShell, maybe not allowing all users to do it, but you know there, there's a good chance there's a use case out there. And you can see this setting type, this elevation type is user confirmed and the rule name is elevate PowerShell. And the only difference really is that I've chosen user confirmed and business justification. I scroll down and we have PowerShell is the file name. We haven't chosen the signature source. We're going to use the file hash. It's 
only that file that will be able to run. Back to my computer, find PowerShell, um, which is in C, I always forget where it is, C Windows System32, Windows PowerShell, and then V1, and PowerShell is hiding right there. So if I double click on that, it will run as a standard user. You can see it's, it doesn't have at the top left, it doesn't have administrator there. And if I close that down, I can right click on it, choose show more options, run with elevated access, and I get the option to give it business justification, which could be as simple as please actually, and choose continue and it opens as administrator. The administrator uh, label at the top there shows this is running as admin. So you can imagine the use cases there. And I've shown the different two ways right now you can use uh, user confirmed and automatic elevation rules. As you can see, there is much for me to learn on these features. I'm super excited to get stuck into even more of this. And they're not even finished releasing, releasing these features yet. There is so much more to come. And yeah, please take a look at this in your own time. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.